Oh shit. We are live. I'm here with the homie Mike Harrisy. What's up, my dude? What's up, man? Happy New Year, Jason. Yeah, happy new year. That's right. Um, this is this is it. This is the, gonna be the one where we turn everything around. <laughs> this is the year. It's our year. Yeah. I feel it. I just see <laughs> the biggest comeback ever. Yeah, we're doing it. Um, today we're talking about the bad lieutenant movies. Uh, so good, the best franchise of all time. <laughs> yeah, man. Um you know what? Uh, let me grab my iPad. I'm sorry. I meant to do that. So I have a little internet research buddy with me. We'll be right back. One second. Sorry. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I want to thank our sponsors at FAMRA. Thank you so much for sponsoring us. You guys are the best. Um, if you're cur curious about FAMRA. What is like FAMRA, Jason? Well, it's spelled like camera, but with an F. And uh, it, it's a free app in the Apple Store. So download it. And it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of really fun environments. We're chilling in a hot teacup <laughs> on the app. Right. It's, it's real uh, steamy in there. I like it. It looks really cozy. I've always wanted a tub. And I've always wanted to, to steep with the homie. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Famra has really made this dream a reality. Absolutely. Yes. It, it looks great. And there's like a infinite pitcher of coffee being poured in the background on there. It looks pretty cool. They're, they're upping the background animation game on this. App. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's neat. Cause like we're, we're two people in this one environment, but I believe this environment can expand up to like five or six people. And when you do that, it like zooms out and there's like another, uh, cup of tea that people fit in. I think there's a third cup too, like, uh, pretty cool. How many people does it take for them to start fucking in the tea? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, one, right? You just need one person, really, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Cause right. You can't really control your avatars that much. I guess my guy, if you tap on the screen, uh, he like put his arms up. Yeah, you guys did too. I don't know what they're yeah, doing. That's I, don't, cool. I don't know what that is. Like, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> it's like a flex thing. I don't even so, know what that something is. Something touched my leg. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. cool. So, yeah, thank you, FAMRA. Please download FAMRA if you get a chance. Uh, but on the subject at hand, uh, tonight, Bad Lieutenant movies. Uh, first one uh, starring Harvey Keitel. What was it? 92? Uh, 1992, directed by Abel Ferrara. Hell yeah. And then awesome, the Bad but, uh, do you know? Do you have any info on the director? Oh, my God. I love Abel Ferrara. This guy <laughs> is so unhinged. I, <laughs> I, love, I love a director that goes on Conan after smoking crack oh wow there's a it's it's his interview on conan o'brien is incoherent he could have played the bad lieutenant <laughs> that's incredible well, i mean but that's another thing about abel ferrara is he does do a lot of weird genre films but they're all very personal they're they all have like a a, 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 a tinge of autobiography in them mm -hmm. um his first um released feature film was uh, the Driller Killer, which is a, uh, a you know an exploitation slasher movie where you can guess what the killer's weapon is, but he plays the the titular uh, Driller Killer and uh, is a frustrated artist in okay. in New York City in the seventies and uh, uh, you know a lot of Gonzo just for, you know street photography. Um, his cinematographer on that film is Ken Kelch, who's a great 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 DP, and they had a falling out over the Driller Killer. And they did not work again for t like almost twenty years until the Bad Lieutenant. Wow. Okay. So this is their reunion. This is their re this is their their reunion. And he's shot, I think, uh, almost all of, if not all of, Abel Ferrara's films since. But they had a big falling out. His, his um, follow up to The Driller Killer is a, is a great uh, rape revenge film called Miss Forty Five. Uh, which is about a mute woman who uh, gets raped twice in one day. Wow. and uh, then goes on a, a, a revenge killing spree and it's it's wonderful wow that's intense yes uh, this movie was intense as well <laughs> yes yes it is uh you know it's funny because i feel like th this and uh reservoir dogs kind of make 1992 the year of harvey Keitel in a yeah, lot of ways for sure and, and uh this was N nc17 when it came out in theater right i don't know why <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder why. I, wonder why. Yeah, it, I guess like it. He wasn't allowed to be nominated for anything because of the rating. Is that 
true? Is that how it that's works? Not, that, that's, that sounds right. I mean, but my God, what a performance. He should have won. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what, what, what in like from the first frame when he's screaming at his kids in the, uh, um, in the 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 car, uh, you, you just know you're in for you're in for a, a wild fucking ride. Yeah, um, uh, there's so many good things about this movie. Uh, the like the I mean, what scene isn't infamous? But the infamous scene with the girls in the car. <laughs> that younger uh, uh yes girls, yeah you know i the, the version i watched i think some stuff was cut out because yeah there's I, there, I, there's a couple versions there's there's some that are pretty gnarly yeah it, so i was i was disappointed because i was listening to some different reviews and just make sure i got all like the facts straight or whatever maybe some interesting tidbits and like yeah I, apparently for that scene there's like two or three different versions uh one where like Tell me about the one you saw. I've seen two. I've seen one that was very edited, where it kind of it kind of ends with him insinuating they need to provide him for for the uninitiated. Harvey Keitel, um, as the title suggests, is a bad lieutenant. He is a, a a police officer with the New York City Police, and there's a scene where he pulls over a couple of young, potentially underage girls. And rather than letting them go afterwards, he there, there's an extended scene of him uh, at first seeming to ask for sexual favors and then in an extended cut actually masturbating in front of these girls. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I heard a rumor that <laughs> uh, he method acted and he actually blew a load on the car <laughs> that's great well th see, th so here's another good thing is one of those one of those girls was his babysitter wow <laughs> and and abel ferrar or someone on set it probably wasn't abel but someone on set said harvey are you sure you want to do this man and he goes oh i'm sure <laughs> oh i got this no problem <laughs> uh he was going through a really acrimonious divorce at the time mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of his anger came into this film in yeah. in obvious ways. There's something really mythic about this film. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, there's something where uh, th there was barely a script. There was a loose outline. Um, he wrote it with... Um, uh, Zoe Lund, who plays the 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 red haired woman that sh uh, ah. shoots Harvey Keitel up with heroin, she also she also played Miss Forty Five, the 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 oh, wow. the, 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 awesome. the mute the mute revenge killer in in uh, uh, Miss Forty Five. She but, had a great um, look. I, I liked how, uh, how she yeah. is such a compelling presence, and she's a great writer. If you go on, there's a, there's a website. She uh, tragically died of a heroin overdose, but you know, uh, I, I if, did hear that. I heard that uh, that shot was her doing heroin like she actually did it in the movie she, for real yeah and i think later that night she like died yeah i mean there's some talk you know later on um ferrara did a a, a movie called the addiction which is a vampire movie and they think that you know some of that has to do with uh there's there's one female character in that film that like it really feels like a zoe lund character um it feels like a pair a character that she would play and even she talks about being a vampire in this film mm -hmm. um but if you read her actual her her writing is quite good. She's written she's written novels and short stories and poetry and stuff. Some of it has been published. Some of, she had like this trilogy of work that uh, she was working on that was like her magnum opus that unfortunately I, I don't think has ever seen the light of day. Oh, but uh, um, what a fucking picture though. The, the and the way that like the 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 you know the way Daryl Strawberry this 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 drug addled <laughs> baseball player kind of like works worms his way through like the New York City radio waves in the background. There kind of like are two parallel stories going. Uh, yeah, I loved how uh, <laughs> he's just constantly talking about this the baseball game and betting constantly and uh, uh, getting the other cops to bet and stuff and doubling down all the time and tripling down in his bed and uh you know i you're just like kind of uh i was just like compelled watching him the whole entire time it's like a crash that you can't look away from you just got to see how how worse it gets you know yeah i mean i think well the, one of my favorite moments is uh the there's the cops that are talking in a garage 
and uh he makes some crack and one of the other cops like kind of bristles at him and goes uh uh are you a catholic and there's a there's a there, there, there's a long pause and he goes yeah yes i am <laughs> and there's a long pause afterwards it's like wow this like there's these these decisions that were like you know things hang in the air in this really kind of uncanny way yeah oh, and the other, the other cop goes show some fucking respect <laughs> yeah yeah um, um but yeah one of those cops is played by victor argo who's the the cop in king of new york which was mm, the previous yeah and apparently this is another good good story uh um this part was originally written for christopher walken mm. it was originally supposed to be more of a comedy wow. like that scene with those girls in the car like because christopher walken's a classically trained dancer he was going to start dancing at one point <laughs> and uh uh i think they they got together for rehearsals or something and they were reading through the script and 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 Walken said i don't i don't think i can do what you want me to do with this movie abel and he and he walked out and they they brought harvey in and wow. harvey fucking kills it yeah absolutely you, i, I I watched like a little like I think it was Siskel and Ebert or Roger and Ebert, whatever it was back in the day, <laughs> and uh, they they were both gave it you know two thumbs up. They they both loved the film uh, despite its NC seventeen rating, and uh, they knew it was pretty controversial not just for the rating but the things that happened in the movie. Uh, but you know they felt like it was a compelling piece of art, and definitely the best acting they've seen hands down. They couldn't name a better actor or performance in any movie. Uh, at least five movies that would top this one. Uh, and so they felt like he, you know, deserved uh, an, a nomination at least, but, you know, they said he probably won't get one because of the NC-17 rating, unfortunately. No, 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 no. And, you know, the... It's funny, you know, you know, not to, not to you know, keep bringing up Reservoir Dogs, but both of these movies have a good Harvey Keitel crying scene. And when Harvey Keitel cries, it's such a fuck. It's not a fun cry to watch. No, it's an ugly it's cry. Ug yeah. It's so fucking ugly. <laughs> yes. And he does multiple times in the movie, you know. Uh, that scene, with Jesus, that scene where, where Jesus appears in front of him and he's screaming at Jesus and then he's crying. It's just like, oh my God, this is a masterpiece right here. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that scene. It, it's it's so, uh, I don't know. At first, it took me by surprise. This is random. All of a sudden, you turn around and you see Jesus. <laughs> I didn't expect that, you know. And uh, <laughs> um, it, it, was, it, it does have strong, like, you know, Catholicism, guilt, uh, you know, foundation in, in this, this story. Uh, mm -hmm. Mixed in with all this, you know, shenanigans he's getting into. And, man, he goes, like, hard from the get-go. Like, he does, like... Yeah, Every hard drug like for three or four days in a row. You know, he's just nonstop. Yeah, uh, it, it's just it, you figure it's like a day in a life, but it's like four days in a row of just like insanity. <laughs> and it's just what he does like every day <laughs> for who knows for how long. You know, he's been doing this forever. Yeah, I mean, even though you know the title going into the movie, like the first time he flashes a badge, it's such kind of a crazy moment. You're like, oh my god, this guy's a fucking cop. <laughs> I, I i think one of my favorite scenes is when he uh uh realizes he you know lost the bet and he's listening to the sports radio in the car and he like pulls out his gun and shoots the radio <laughs> and he just starts cussing and people are like looking at him <laughs> he's so good he turns oh on God. the sirens and he's just yelling through the sirens that that scene where he goes to the club i love that scene and the way that that scene is filmed i mean they I don't think they used any artificial lights from the club. I think they, the, I think they just let the club be as it is. They didn't, they didn't yeah. actually like put any, set any film lights up and they just threw Harvey through a crowd. Yeah. I think and Ken Kelsch just followed him. Yeah. It, it, it that was like a, such a real thing. You know, you feel like claustrophobic in there with them and you can see like all the sweat, <laughs> you know? It's, yeah. Oh God. Like, yeah. Every pore this guy's looking. And I gotta say, you know, Harvey, He's not a young man in this movie, and I I ad admire his willingness to to get naked. And he does this again in in the piano, the the Jane Campion movie, uh, you know, the, the following that, year. That naked scene was not in the one I watched, and that's that's how I figured out. I was like, you know, what cut did I watch? It, I was like, I was so bummed because I think I got it from like Amazon or Netflix or something. I mean, I forgot where I watched it on, yeah. but it's like, of course they would edit it. You know, like that kind of yeah. sucks, man. I, I was like. So when I started watching these like reviews, it's like okay, well I missed like you know the uh, 
uh, jerk off car scene. Then, like, oh, I missed off the one where he's like, yeah, you might you might as well have not seen the movie if you didn't yeah. see him come on the car, or, like... <laughs> or, or the uh, you know the the naked uh, Jesus stand crying, ugly crying. There's yeah. you know, naked. Like, uh oh, I'm so bummed I missed that because uh, like uh, Siskel and Abram talked about that scene where he's just stand there naked, <laughs> and I was like, when was that? Uh, I, I was I was so bummed. So I got to find a director's cut or something or uh, unrated. Yeah. Cut. Yeah, the, I, I, I definitely saw the director's cut when I was a teenager and I was like, whoa. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, yeah, the last time I saw it was on the app Tubi and Tubi had the uh, censored version. Yeah, you know, maybe I did watch it on Tubi. No, maybe Vudu. I can't remember where I I'm a fan it, of but... I'm a fan of Tubi as far as streaming mm-hmm. services go. I think Tubi's a, good, Tubi's a good resource. I, I recently watched all the... Uh... Beast Wars and Beast Machines oh. cartoons. Oh, on sick! Because I, I haven't seen them since I was like in middle school or high school, whenever they came out. And uh, I remember not finishing Beast Machines, which was the sequel to Beast Wars. And so it was just this thing in my mind where like I gotta finish it. I, I, I always want to know how that story finished and and did it. What will, will it hold up? And and uh, you know, of course, for the most part, you know, Beast Wars was always okay. I enjoyed that. I think. Uh, that was a fun piece of nostalgia revisiting that. But Beast Machines, uh, well, I think, it was a big, uh, heavy dumpster fire, unfortunately. But I finished that, and I feel complete having watched them now. But thank it, you, Tubi. Yeah, yeah, Tubi's great. I saw. I mean, they have a bunch of Ferrara's other films, and they have a bunch of his 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 catalog that's a little bit harder to track down. Mm-hmm. And I think this is kind of a benchmark of Tubi. Is Tubi will will go? They'll be in the cut for some shit. Yeah, like the they have. You know. Ferrara has been sober for a number of years, but he was really not sober for a, a good stretch. And there's a stretch in the 90s where his films, they get almost impressionistic in their editing. There will be like a beginning and then the movie will just kind of like bleed into itself. Like uh, if you, he, he has a, a couple of this, that, 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 stick out that are kind of in this vein are new rose hotel which is an adaptation of a william gibson uh novella starring willem dafoe uh, azia argento and christopher walken where there's like a it's it, it's weird it's almost like what if the matrix was an independent film made in the early to mid 90s and uh they didn't have any money for special effects wow yeah uh what was that that grant morrison uh comic that the matrix stole from the invisibles yes that's what it was i was like wondering when that came out what year um yeah it might have been like late 90s maybe so i think matrix came out in what 99 so 99 yeah. was the matrix yeah i, I just rewatched maybe. the matrix it was it dude it holds up og yeah. matrix holds up that's a fucking yeah. classic yeah for sure um yeah i want to say like that comic probably came out mid 90s then and i believe the the storyboards were made by like one of the artists for that comic oh that's cool yeah um, um but yeah so anyway so the, the the point i was trying to make was uh so that film he did another film called the blackout which is about uh um a an actor a filmmaker it was, it was it, it, a, a loose abel for our stand-in played by matthew modine who uh, goes to Miami and has this horrible goes on this horrible bender and then a year later as a sober person goes back to uh, uh, try to recreate the these events that he cannot remember and uh, Dennis Hopper plays the sort of like you know devil on his shoulder the the bad influence friend uh, um, and the other one is the dangerous game with Harvey Ke- oh yeah so dangerous game is about a filmmaker who falls in love with his lead actress who's played by Madonna and uh, all three of these films there's this kind of impressionistic editing style where like there's a lot of slow motion and cross dissolves and it's kind of like they're just kind of like creating the film in the editing process there's this kind of um i don't know conjuring effect uh but these films feel really kind of soupy and 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 and, and druggy not in an unpleasant or mm-hmm. you know it yeah, this, this doesn't feel like a student film or anything like it, it right. feels very intentional but the, the, certainly like King of New York, Bad Lieutenant, even though these are dark films, they feel very cohesive. There is a story being told here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, for, for me, I, I, 
when I saw this bad lieutenant, I was thinking of like what else was was happening around that time, and uh, I guess in other media. I was, uh, right, right away, I, I was just thinking comics, and I feel like that's when the like image, uh, you know, you know, explosion came out. Image comics and all. Oh, the Spawn was ninety two. All the extreme characters, you know, you have. Uh, I guess you know. I guess Dark Knight, Frank Miller's Dark Knight comes out a little more grittier. Mm -hmm. Batman, you have you know the image characters with the big guns and like the huge muscles and stuff, you know, uh, and so they're, they're, killing, they're killing drug dealers and people with mohawks and things like that. You know, it's like it, it's it's a uh, you know extremism, I, I guess I would say, you know, for for that media and, and and stuff during that time. And so I feel like this movie fit right in <laughs> during that time period of, of extreme uh, but media. But that's the fucked up thing is when 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 he catches the bad guys at the end, he he forgives them. That's the yeah. fucked up Catholicism of this movie, right? Yeah, because the nun forgave uh, them. Yeah, and I, I like. The oh my god, the, the nun's monologue is so gnarly. <laughs> I, I like what you know. He asked her. He was like, you know, well, sure, you forgive them, but like, you know, who are you to forgive them? And like. Yes, that's fine. Maybe they won't attack you again, but they could be attacking some other people. Like, can you hold that on your conscience? Like all these other people's lives and and things bad things will happen to the, these other people that you don't know will happen. Are you okay with that? And she was fine with it, I guess. I mean, he just had a hard time dealing with that. And uh, apparently, you know, I, you know that scene at the end where he's driving them in the car <laughs> and and you know, it's like his sons in the beginning of the movie. You know. I felt like, you know, yeah. maybe he felt like. Oh, that's, that's a nice symmetry. Towards... That's a really good symmetry. I never thought about that. How they're, you know, it's the two boys. I felt like it was like his sons, how he felt like he has been doing a bad job raising them and they're going to be his sons in the future. That's what his boys turn out to be, you know? And I felt like, you know, he's just like, sorry for being a bad father at the same time and like giving them money to go and start a new life. Uh, that's how I, I felt like, you know, yeah. it's like his, his, his Catholic guilt and his fatherly guilt all combined into one and, uh, you know, sends these. Uh, you know, criminals on their way, and then like Jesus, he dies in the end. Spoiler yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, totally. That that kind of a drive-by scene, which you know you knew was hey coming. cop. Yeah, hey cop. Yeah, I just knew which that is the same coming. thing. Which is the same thing that they say in uh, King of New York right before they kill David Caruso. <laughs> hey cop. <laughs> I hope that's the last thing I hear when I die. <laughs> yeah, not even a cop. Say hey, hey cop. you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot who I was talking to about. I, mean, I think it was my wife. I was talking to her and I was like, yeah, I'm like, if I'm ever on my deathbed, like, give me all the drugs. Just, yeah. <laughs> just, just let me try all the drugs before yeah. I die. <laughs> okay. Good. What about, uh, he dies in front of Trump Plaza, doesn't he? Uh, he does. And, and there was a picture of Evander Holyfield and Bill Cosby. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's yeah. so good. I love that. Yeah. At first I'm like, is that Mike Tyson to the left? And then like, it, you know, it cuts to something else and cuts back and it's a little more zoomed out and it's Bill Cosby. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what pretty, a wonderful picture. Uh -huh. Wonderful picture. And then we have the, the newer one uh, by Warner Herzog. Also Amazing. a masterpiece. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I had so much fun watching both of these. Uh, I, I can't even, I think I like both of them for, for so many different reasons. Um, yeah, it's tough to say. I mean, I, Nicolas Cage is just my favorite actor. And I think he, <laughs> this and Vampire's Kiss are probably my favorite of his performances. It's called Vampire's he, Kiss is the other one? Vampire's Kiss is a film he did in the 80s. And okay. um, he's phenomenal in that. But both of these films, he just lets go so mm -hmm fucking hard he just dives in oh my god like there are stretches of this this movie like i have seen this movie a million fucking times <laughs> and i could probably you know do the whole thing as a one-man show at this point <laughs> That's amazing. but like but like there's moments where you're just you're, you're afraid like you're like oh my god this guy's so unhinged like uh he he re, re, like it really feels like drugs it's at, at some points Yes, for sure. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, what Warner Hartsog wanted to call it, uh, what, whatever the subtitle was. To yeah, this Port movie. of Call New Orleans. Because he had never seen it. Yeah, he never saw the original Bad yeah, Lieutenant. Yeah, Ed, 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 Press, Ed, Ed Pressman had the, uh, had the rights still to Bad Lieutenant and wanted to franchise it. Yeah, which is ridiculous. Well, un it is until you see this movie and then you start thinking, oh, it fuck. Like, 
Yeah, like, well, like, well, there. There's a lot of bad lieutenants out there, you know, all cops are bastards. Like you could do bad lieutenant port of call Waikiki or port of call, you know, you know, uh, Duluth, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it it does have a lot of similarities with, with the, the bad cop doing a bunch of drugs, you know. And and this one all started because he had back problems and uh, got subscribed some pills and then yeah, just well, went on. <laughs> you know, but like, like four years later, he's just gone. Well, I mean, it also kind of seems like he's a bad cop before the back problems, too, you know? <laughs> and at the end of the movie, you know, after you think he's learned his lesson, everything's good. No, he still hasn't changed. He's still so, a bad, uh, what, sergeant or something? Captain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, so I think you're you're 100% right. You really can appreciate both of these movies on two different levels. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I this is a great story about, you know, kind of parsing out the meaning of, of both of these films at, at the i think it was the venice film press venice film festival premiere of bad lieutenant in um 2008 2009 whichever year it came out um the in, in the in the press conference you know uh Werner herzog was asked at one point you know, Werner, the, the first bad lieutenant is about uh sin and the power of redemption what's your movie about and, you know, Werner Herzog thinks for a moment and he goes, my film is about the bliss of evil. <laughs> I think that's what that movie's about. Like, you feel like every every bad thing this guy does, you kind of get a little jolt out of it. Like, when he rips off the fucking prostitutes, John, he's like, the guy's like, who the fuck are you? And he just shows off his big gun. He goes, I'm the last person in the world you want me to be. You're just like, oh, my God. Like, just keep robbing more people at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love the. Uh, I guess I heard some part of an interview with Werner Herzog where people were like, you know, the interviewer was was like, what what is the symbolism or significance of, of the iguanas that appeared every now and then, and it, you really stayed on them for a while. And he's like, I I am not one to have metaphor. I don't understand metaphor. <laughs> he's like, I don't have symbolism. It is just what I want to make. And it's like, okay, well, you just wanted to have an iguana there. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I mean, I, 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 which made me think of, you know, the second scene of the iguana, which is, uh, uh, shoot him again. His soul is still, still breaking, still, still dancing. His soul is still dancing. Yeah. And this, this guy's just break dancing. I love that part. I love that scene. That's so good. Oh, and his, he's got that weird crack laugh where he's just like, <laughs> yes. it's so scary. Yes. He's just so unhinged. It, it yeah. is incredible. It is like and he. It's <laughs> how do you feel about the like midway through the film, or maybe like in the, in the third act? All of a sudden, he has like an accent for a he good can, like half you know, an hour, it, and then it, and then he loses it again. Well, it, you know what it is is when he starts uh, it, like when things are really bad. Like right after he gets high, he kind of becomes Jimmy Stewart a little bit. I was going to say it's like I don't know if you saw like Spider Man into the into the Spider Verse. Uh, the cartoon uh, from Sony. Uh, the, the main character is Miles Morales, but the character, the Spider-Man character, goes into uh, the multiverse where he finds a, a, a multiverse of Spider people, and one of them is Spider-Man Noir, which is like you know based in like nineteen, you know early nineteen hundreds. It's you know World War One, I, I would say era Spider-Man, and he's more of a detective, all in black and white. And that character was voiced by Nicolas Cage, and it was no, like the shit. same. It was the same voice. It was That's the same great. exact like accent. Like he's like he's doing the Spider Man Noir voice, you know. <laughs> it's, it is ridiculous. It is like Jimmy Stewart, like, uh, but it's it's almost like like old timey radio kind of or uh, old. Uh, when he's telling that story about the spoon in the shed <laughs> for no reason, and, and uh, it's like when he does find it, it's like a crackhead spoon. It has like the burn marks on it's it. Burnt, yeah, it's all <laughs> rusty and shit. And, and she's, she's like, like touching her face with it. Even Mendes is like, it's beautiful. <laughs> so. You know everything, but the thing, like, like the, the what you're pointing out is like every little thing in this movie pays off in a way, and like, it's, it's, it's so tight in in that way that like every little screenplay element gets circled back on, mm -hmm. you know, to the point of like it still ends with him and this guy, you know, essentially submerged underwater together, uh, just as it began, but like. This same year, he made Herzog made two films. There was this film and My Son, My Son, What Have You Done was the second film that he made that year. And it, with both of these films, it kind of feels like what Herzog did was he took the two worst scripts he could find and 
made documentaries about actors acting them out. <laughs> and it works really well in Bad Lieutenant because it's kind it's it's kind of unhinged and it's really insane and in and, and it's really fun. But with my son, my son, what have you done? Like he'll he'll, he'll he tries the same gag, and you'll see like Michael Shannon and Chloe Sevigny and Michael Pena and Willem Dafoe, and they'll do these things. And you watch these kind of really good actors say some really bad dialogue, and they'll just kind of like stewing it. <laughs> he'll let the camera linger on these moments. That it's interesting, but it's not as effective as it is in in Port of Call, New Orleans. That's interesting. And I'll yeah. say he gets really good performances out of people in this movie. The exhibit has never been exhibit. better. I was gonna say exhibit, yeah. And yeah. Val Kilmer is great. Every time I watch <laughs> the movie, like I my eyes keep drifting more and more to see what Kilmer is doing in the background. Yeah, it's you know, always something weird. It is a bummer that that he like disappears for the most of the movie. And my wife is like, Where'd Val Kilmer go? Can we get more Val Kilmer? I'm like, I know, like he was so great. Yeah, Stevie. Cuff him, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah he just is like no we just yeah. take all his shit just kill him right now yeah. we'll take all his he, stuff he only pretends to like you because he likes to get high <laughs> yeah uh, with his lucky crack pipe by the way yeah, that that lucky amazing. crack you don't have a lucky crack pipe <laughs> I mean, that's perfect he just plants it and you know uh and and the first murder case scene you know i'm surprised he even did that because you you figure like he had a plan and he could have continued on with exhibit and made money all the time. And he just, you know, didn't want money all the time. He's just like, uh, I, mean, I want to solve it and have justice for the first case. And okay. no, that's the thing though. This guy's actually a pretty a just dude. And he's, he's pretty like the just greatest detective in the area. Apparently yeah. he's like the greatest detective that the, the, the department has. And it's, it, it, I didn't think about this at the first time I saw it in theaters, but the second time I watched it, I was like, Oh Wow everybody around him knows that he's high all the time and they just go with it <laughs> that's a good point yeah that's something you don't wouldn't notice on the first time around yeah yeah i was just like oh my god like yeah like th his boss totally knows he's fucked up <laughs> um that's incredible oh the, the so the you know dave the guy whose soul is still dancing at the end oh yes um the screenwriter that's the screenwriter great Great screenwriter cameo. You couldn't ask for a better one. Wait, the, the break dancer was the screenwriter. No, no, no. The guy, the, the actor who okay, plays okay. the fucking the, the loan shark that's escorting okay. him. Okay. Wow. That's but funny. that that scene at the end. There's one shot. It's it like it's kind of crazy that they put this in the movie because it's so it it, it 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 just it's it's not what you do in a movie where like that shot where it goes Shea Wiggum. And then Brad Shea Wiggum's like, "Hey man, we got to call off this beef we have. You know, it's too much. Like, too many yeah. people are disappearing." <laughs> and like, he that. leaves. He leaves frame. And then Brad Dourif comes in and he goes, "Like, here's all the money you won from the from the gambling. Congratulations." <laughs> yeah, good and news. then the more good news. Yeah. yeah. And then the chief comes in and goes, "Great news. We got the guy." <laughs> and you're just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> it's like it, it. It's so fucking wild. I I was like. Ah. When before all that happened, right before that happened, I was like, I really hope everything works out for him, and because you know the last one, things didn't work out. So I wanted to see things, you know, happen with you know for for this guy, even though he's been like bad and crazy. I want to see things like work out okay for him in the end, and have him not learn a lesson and continue this forever. And, and uh, it it worked out perfectly. Like at that moment, where it's like, wow, good news, good news. Good news, and then I was getting even more anxious because I was like, "Oh no, something bad's gonna happen. He's gonna lose it all. Uh, you know, the stakes are higher now because he has everything. Everything worked out, and uh, it, it does it. Every, you know, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was so happy that things worked yeah, out. Yeah, that that you know, I that little laugh that he gives at the end, right before it cuts to black, is so satisfying. Like he he got away with it. <laughs> like that's the feeling of at yeah. the end. You're like, wow, I can't believe everything worked out so great. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, oh, what, I was a surprised. what a picture. I mean, okay, like gun to your head, which bad lieutenant do you go with? Uh, you know, I think I would have a lot more fun watching the second one uh, again mm -hmm. uh, with, with new eyes and understanding what happened. The first one, I think, uh, you know, was a fun ride. You know, it was, it was a interesting ride, I should say, I guess. Uh, and it might be the better movie but mm -hmm. I would enjoy watching the second one again. Yeah, I love, I mean, the second one is so fun. Yeah, do you have a, uh, a, a preference either? 
I mean, I've seen the second one way more times than I've seen the first one. Um... <laughs> Excuse me, miss. I'm in a detective a homicide investigation. Can I get my prescription now, yeah. please? Yeah, and she's been on the phone for like, what, 10 minutes or 20 like, minutes or whatever? You've been on the phone 40 fucking minutes. And he just goes behind, grabs his shit, and like, what's my copay? Like, 40 bucks? Like, here, fucking oh, yeah. keep the change. The, 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 security, the security guard is like, you're not a cop. He goes, what the fuck is this? And he flashes his gun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And he takes his pills right there. Oh, yeah. so good. I, I love yeah. this. I love how you didn't take any shit like that. Like, that's something we all desire to do to the pharmacy person or like, you mm-hmm. know when you're waiting is just to go off on him like that yeah. and do whatever you want. And he can, cause he's a cop. And also I love the, uh, the old folks home, uh, you know, part where he's like, he's like, you're, you're what's wrong with America. He's like, I yeah. should kill you right now. I should kill you right yeah. now. <laughs> just scaring these yeah. old women. I, I, I love that, that scene so much. Uh, that was amazing because I think that's the only that. scene where he's, he's wearing a different suit. If you, if you watch really, really? carefully and, and, and Herzog told him like, this is the you're going to the opera. That's that was his direction. This is your opera suit. I, I love He's how shaving in the, behind the door. He looks exactly like fucking. He looks so terrible in this movie. <laughs> he was like, who knows how long he was waiting behind that door. He was waiting so long that he decided to start shaving, and, and they didn't even hear the buzzer when he was like shaving. No, it's <laughs> and so good. In. Yeah, I, I love that scene though. It's like. You know, once again, to get away with things that that the normal man couldn't, uh, you know, I, I think there's been times where we dealt with like older people who are just ignorant or whatever, or don't know what they're talking about, and you just want to yell at them, but you don't. And, and he's like, he just goes off on these old people. It was fantastic. You know, I feel like the the takeaway from this conversation, Jay, is that we should become, become police cops. officers. We should become <laughs> cops. Yeah, from, you from... know, we got to destroy the problem from the inside, right? Is that how that works? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. I'm very easily influenced. I don't know about you. And this movie definitely made me want to do a lot of drugs and become a cop. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm there with you. I, I mean, besides being the cop part, but you know. <laughs> yeah. The um, There's a weird cameo. For, I, I don't know if you got this weird cameo from Michael Shannon. When was he's, that? He's Munt. He's the cop in the property, the kind of wormy cop in the property room who's like, I can't steal anything more for you, Terrence. Yeah, you know, yeah. They're installing guy. cameras. And then you see him in the property room and he's like trying to like map out <laughs> his the wall. He's like kind of yeah. hugging in the corner. And... <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, goddamn. Like, I know, you know, there wouldn't be a second one without the first one. And like, I know that the Abel Ferrara movie is a masterpiece and Harvey Keitel deserves all of the fucking praise for that performance but well, god damn it i love port of call new orleans yeah. man what, what, I'm, I'm, did you have, what did you have seen it though if it wasn't called bad lieutenant i mean i probably would have because i like i, I love yeah, cage like and i herzog. love herzog yeah, you know yeah. and I, I and and that's that's an interest you know it's it it's kind of sad they haven't done another film together you know i feel like because he does a couple of things there's a shot that he lifts almost wholesale from his earlier film a gary the wrath of god which i would probably say is my favorite Werner herzog film i don't know if i would say it's his best but it's my favorite um but like there's a scene in a gary the wrath of god where klaus there, there she's shooting at the rapids and klaus kinski kind of like whirls into frame and he does the same shot with cage in uh, the casino where he's kind of looking around wild-eyed and for that for for his his witness and you can kind of imagine you know cage is kind of a klaus kinski analog in in a lot of performative aspects i really like that that scene and and you know uh, when it's looking for the witness in, in the you know i guess uh, casino i was trying to, i was like vegas now um yeah going from one bathroom to the other and you can feel the anxiety and, and you know the uh the stakes of that scene you know i was i was super anxious like man that that kid is gone who knows is he kidnapped you know is he dead somewhere uh you know and this is like the the key to the case that he's trying to solve and uh you, you can feel like the panic there the anxiety of him going from one place to the other and and uh yeah and, and we never saw the kid again he went to, to the, he uh, went to london. england yeah, yeah went to england <laughs> he got away from from new orleans yeah. um 
I think about, uh, you know, kids today d don't know how good they have it. Like they, you know, when you watch like Uncut Gems or uh, the other Safdie Brothers uh, uh, popular joint, The Good Time, those films are so stressful. But like, I don't know. Watching Bad Lieutenant, like it, it, the part of Call, it's like, oh my god! Like this film is also really fucking stressful at a certain point. Like so many things are going wrong, and you're kind of like at, at a certain point, like you're like things are are building up in this way. We're like, I don't know how we're gonna get through all of this fucking plot. Like how are all these things are gonna be resolved? Mm -hmm. Like a part, a certain part of me thought they would just weren't. Like the right. scene where they go, where he like you know turns and starts working with Exhibit, and they're looking at the fucking uh the 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 harbor as the his homies are like dumping a body over the bridge i thought that and was it, the kid for a second well i I, yeah. I i really thought like you know when when nick cage looks at the exhibit and goes you know what donald you're right this would be a good spot for condominiums i thought oh that's the end of the movie right there <laughs> they're just gonna build <laughs> they're just gonna build condos i i thought for a second like that was the kid that was wrapped up and uh you know, he was going to either make him dump the body off the, the, the deck or something. Uh, thankfully, we just never know who, who that body was. No, we uh, really don't. But I think one of my favorite parts was uh, when he walks in on, uh, I guess, what, the, the governor's nephew or whatever uh, with his, his, you know, kind of girlfriend, Eva Mendez, and she has the black eye. So he goes and, you know, confronts him and, uh, uh you know, he's like, you know, I, I'm going to come after you or, you know, stay away from her or whatever. And guy's like, wow, wow. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. You know, you messed up, man. Okay, wow. And he's like, kept saying that and like walks out. And then he like closed the door. I was racked oh, up. Yeah. He's like, wow. Oh. <laughs> and he like walks out. And then, yeah, and then he says goodbye to, to the, the young key witness. He's like, no, you, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He points to me and he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that part. He's like disco stew, or like you know, like I, I just love that guy. That was so good. I had never, uh, so that's that's Shea Wiggum, and I had never seen him in anything before that. But he's gone on to have like a really good career as a character actor. Awesome. Um, he was in uh, the first season of True Detective. He uh, plays yes, the okay. he he plays like the tent revival minister who eventually yes. loses his ways. Uh, yes. He's the he's in. Uh, vice principals he's the the cool stepdad that marries uh danny mcbride's first wife <laughs> um yeah he's he's done he was in the the waco miniseries yeah he uh shea wiggum's great and he's wonderful in that yeah. part with yeah, that the, was, the that was like the one part where like nick cage was outdone by like another person that was next to him you know on screen yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard to go toe to toe with him, and he the she she, she brought it. He yeah. really did. <laughs> yeah, that was that was so good. Well, I mean, we can. Uh, do you have any any last closing thoughts, man? You want to have on what's 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 your what's your remake of Bad Lieutenant? Where what oh, are you going to do, question. and where 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 are you going to set it? Oh, I like that. Good question, man. Uh, how about in Amsterdam? Where Damn. Like, yeah, you know, you already Damn. have Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, you already have like the red light district. You know, you have uh, you know, all kinds of European freedoms and things you can do, and and you know, the surrounding countries, and you don't have to keep it just in Amsterdam. Um, you know, there, there, there's a lot there. I think you know to have a, a European bad lieutenant. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Be fun. I'm not sure who um, I'd have star though. You know, I'd be yeah. great to have Nicolas Cage again, but it's like you know, if you if you couldn't, you know, uh, cast him, who who would you cast as as a, I, as a new I, bad, bad lieutenant? I always go with The Rock. I'm always saying. <laughs> always <laughs> I feel like rock. I say The Rock every time. How about we get a uh, Matthew McConaughey for for True Detective kind of? Uh, yeah, I mean, oh yeah, I, well you could argue in certain parts of season one, he he kind of is the bad lieutenant. He's 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 he's, he's taking all sorts of weird drugs. He's doing meth with those bikers. You know. Yeah. I mean, he was undercover before that, I guess, apparently for who knows how long. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was, you know, prepped and ready to to go the distance and, and do those drugs and and go deep undercover and be OK. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I would like to see a bad lieutenant with Matthew McConaughey uh, being the bad lieutenants. And yeah, I guess I would set it in. Yeah. And maybe Amsterdam or uh, maybe Vegas. Uh, I'm trying to think what else would, would be cool setting. You know, when, when that part and uh, when when he met Exhibit 
and said he would do security for him. I thought his play was going to be, uh, you know, because like we said, the, the the actor we liked a lot, that was, you know, the, the governor's nephew or whatever the hell. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that he was going to not pay back, uh, you know, those guys uh, and not pay back his bookies and stick as being a security guard for the drug dealer. And then, you know, say like, oh, the cops are coming or whatever, whenever they come after him. Mm-hmm. And then they just have like a shootout between, you know, the gang he's kind of with and then the other enemies and have his enemies fight his enemies. You know what I mean? And have like it all just done like that. Oh, so you, you you think it should be like a, um, was it Red Harvest or Yojimbo or like Fistful of Dollars where he's just turning one side against the other? Yeah, I mean, I never saw those, but yeah. Oh, those yeah, are good. I, those are good. I, I'm sure. Yeah, I, they're definitely films of no Actually, variety. those are those are. Uh, so Yojimbo is a is a uh, Akira Kurosawa mm-hmm. samurai mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. Um, that borrows its plot liberally from this Dashiell Hammett novel, mm-hmm. The Red Harvest. Okay. Cool. Uh, which is an American crime story that also served as an inspiration for um, the Coen Brothers' uh, Miller's Crossing. But Sergio Leone then loosely remade Yojimbo as a fistful of dollars with Clint Eastwood, and that became mm-hmm. the first in the trilogy that led up to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Yeah, I, I really like uh, Dashiell Hammett. Uh, I always wanted to read any anything he wrote, but you know, I, I just there's notoriety as as a you know uh, detective noir type you know uh, author. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it's always like resonated with me. I think I think it's just like always cool. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff's dope. Uh, mm-hmm. You know. Again, it's like we just gotta become cops, man. That's the that's what this is. <laughs> or, or you know, watching the the Matrix, I you know I re- re- revisited all of those before watching the new one, including the Animatrix, and the Animatrix had a detective story. It does. I there. remember that one. That was a good yeah. one. That was really cool. That, that was had really, really cool. cool vibes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and that just reminded me. I was thinking of Dashiell Hammond and Detective Moore stuff, and and that did, one was. Did Carrie Ann Moss vo- voice that one? Was that actually yes, her? yes, and Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. That's so dope. Definitely. I guess you know we talked about it. I think in, in uh, the chat message, but uh, what did you think of the new Matrix movie? I honestly, so I, I, the reviews I read of it before seeing it were all terrible, and they said, mm-hmm. "Oh, this is this is a tragedy." Blah blah blah. blah. And I, I thought that the the new Matrix was oddly touching. I thought that mm-hmm. it was an, a, a kind of a really lovely synthesis of you know, Lana's resentment of the the burden of this franchise and also her undeniable affection for these characters and you know she she said something to the effect of like look you know i can't bring back my parents who are dead but i can bring back neo and trinity and besides my parents these two people probably had the most impact on my life Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i I respect that and yeah for sure it it was interesting uh i think it's some really interesting ideas uh i liked how um, you can have a computer program come into the real life, and they had those kind of uh, it looked like those those like if you remember as a kid that toy where you put your, pe- your hand in yeah the, the pins, thing in the, the doctor's pins. office yeah yeah like those things uh, yeah, yeah totally that was that was really cool um, and that actor that that played the new Morpheus uh, was really cool and yeah he's really fun he was Candyman and he was yes. uh, Doctor Doctor Manhattan in uh, the New Watchmen. That's right. You know, uh, gosh, I was trying to remember like where I helped, where the hell I remembered him from, and it was the new Candyman because my wife is not a big horror fan, and so I was trying to get her to watch some. You know, we call them spooky scaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, some watch some spooky scaries during the Halloween season, and uh, so she decided just like she, you know, I, I'm like just pick one and we'll watch like the whole series and like well, let's try Candyman. So I never seen any of them, so we watched all the Candyman movies, all four of them. Uh, Did you, and, were they dope? They were dope, uh, yeah. and and she actually really enjoyed them too. She doesn't like horror movies at all. Uh, she gets scared easily, I guess, and she loved them all. I mean, well, she liked, she loved the first one, and she even liked part two, and maybe even kind of part three to a certain extent. She hated the new one. Uh, she was not a fan of the new one because it was not the original Candyman. It was Tony kind of, Todd. Yeah, it was not Tony Todd. Uh, I mean, we did see Tony Todd at the very end, but even then, the main character that they're talking about that was Candyman. Uh, that the artist found they changed the story where it wasn't the tony todd candy man it was the uh kind of the the pimp uh 
character from part one uh, that was uh, giving out candy to, to children and things like that. Uh, you know, it, it was kind of a contradictory and it didn't really make sense either that mm. uh, some of the throwbacks that, that, they, that they did. And uh, it, we, you know, I think we both agree we, we didn't like it very much. Uh, I, I liked it just fine for what it was, but uh, you know, her, uh, she's really getting into kind of continuity <laughs> of stories and, and, uh, and, you know, uh, intertwining, you know, through lines and she thought this one was just way off but that was where we we recognized that guy from <laughs> you know we're like who, who is that guy he looks so familiar and yes the watchman show which we loved we thought that was amazing we we, we both really that was really that yeah. was really phenomenal that was way better than it had any right to be yeah absolutely and i'm really glad they're not going to make a, a sequel to it um and, yeah and i it, guess you know to kind of go full circle back around to the matrix uh, they said, you know, in the movie, it's like, you know, Warner Brothers can make another Matrix with or without you. So what that was are you great. Do? The, the first I was so stoked on how much humor and just, you know, biting of the hand that feeds that first half of the film yeah. had. You know, when they were like, you know, oh, the Matrix, it's about capitalism. It's about postmodernism. It's about the trans experience. It's bullet time. And, you know, they're. <laughs> That, you know what? Did you did you stay till after the credits? Did yeah. you see the post? Uh, that, yeah, the that little, that little, the, yeah, the little post stinger video where it's like, "Fuck movies, we're just going to do cat videos from now on." <laughs> yeah, gosh, it it, it kind of bums me out that it came out around the same time as Spider Man, uh, just because like you know it it tanked in the box office and uh, did it? It, it it nowhere met its budget. Like not that's, even close. Well, that's too, and, well, that's too so, bad. I mean, I, I highly doubt we're going to see another trilogy. Uh, at, maybe they'll make an animated. I think series. they want to do. I think they want to do something interactive. I think they want to do that's some cool. big open world Matrix thing. You know, you know, like did, did you? Uh, I, I have a PS5 and I played the new uh, Unreal Engine uh, Matrix uh, little tour uh, that they just put out recently. Is it did dope? You, it's no, pretty I, cool. I don't, I don't have a PS5. Did you hear anything about that before? I just know that they were doing it, but I, I, okay. I don't. It it is uh, graphically amazing. Uh, you know, there's there's points where, uh, you know, you're wondering uh, if if it's really Keanu Reeves, you know, filmed, or if it's like a a digital creation of him. Wow. And uh, at points, you know, it looks great from like close up shots. It mm -hmm. looks amazing. Wow. Uh, but but then when it zooms out and you see like the body walking, not so much. Uh, then you're like that looks fake and, and kind of off, and then you you know they they multiply the characters and you see lots, lots of the same character and it, it looks even more off. Uh, you know it, it becomes more of a mess. But then the actual game itself, not really a game, it's more like a, a little tour where you can uh, you're in a, in, a in, in the Matrix, you're in a city and you can run around and steal cars and kind of like GTA a little bit and just drive around and it looks pretty sharp. Um, some of the mechanics are, are a little off. Uh, uh, people were, were were all up in arms about it, saying it's the best thing ever, and I didn't think it was that good, but uh, it was enjoyable to try out, and uh, it was a fun experience, uh, especially the, the first half of it. The first half, it's more of a, a, a cinema and like a a uh, uh, interactive kind of movie where it's like you just gotta move the joystick to the left to shoot a guy, and, and then you're in mm -hmm. a car chase scene. It's really exciting, and you know you just gotta move the cursor on top of like the targets and shoot really quick, and the you know has the uh, the, the vibration controls that you know match with the vibrations of, of what you're seeing on TV, and it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a good experience, and I recommend for you know anyone to try it that has a PS5. Uh, I think I'm, I'm not sure if it's available for PS4 or not, but uh, it's really cool. Uh, and so I got excited for the movie. I was super hyped for it, and uh, and then um, you know I, I don't want to say I was like completely let down because <laughs> I, I kind of had low expectations from those reviews, like, like you as well. Um, but you know it it I'm okay with, with how they did things uh for the most part it was uh it was a brave i would say take on on doing it uh, that way you know because yeah totally i don't think you know people were like oh it's you know star wars uh whatever you know the force awakens or it's like you know uh a reboot of the the original over again and it's not that great and it's a uh, you know nostalgia fan crap shoot and I didn't take it that way, you know. I thought it was, um, yeah, it, it was, was bold, great. and you <laughs> it, know, was it was bold, really, yeah. it was really idiosyncratic in a way that I feel like, you know, the way that the first Matrix would never get greenlit today. Like, it's kind of hard to believe that this one got greenlit because it's so kind of weird in its structure. And like, I'm, 
I'm a sucker for the gag of, you know, cross cutting back and forth between actors young versus actors old to like, you know, emphasize the theme of, you know, loss and legacy and time. And I mm-hmm. thought, you know, I thought that was, that was elegantly handled. Um, I did really miss Lawrence Fishburne and Hugo Weaving. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, uh, they, they, apparently, they, apparently Hugo Weaving was down to do it but yeah there's a scheduling schedule. conflict right yeah yeah which is like i'm kind of like oh you should have just waited like yes. a little bit to let him in there yes. that would have made the biggest difference that was that would have been so huge that would have been so great to see hugo weaving as his boss you know and, and the mm-hmm. tension because the audience knows who he is and stuff you know it's like the tension of seeing them just be like work compatriots uh you know and mm-hmm. have this boss employee dynamic uh, and, and them not really know each other, but they, they still feel that, 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 you know, confrontation kind of silently, uh, that'd have been nice. Well, and, I kind uh, of wanted there to be like more removals of like meta in this whole thing. Like if you got back, like even like, you know, as they kept being pulled out of the matrix more and more, it'd be like, oh, there's actually like, you know, another level where it's like, oh, he's not Neo and he's not Tom Anderson. He's an actor named Keanu Reeves. And then he has <laughs> to get pulled out of that, you know? And, you know, that's what, kind of where I thought that we're going to go with it in the beginning before watching the movie. And I expected, expected it to be like the matrix was a movie, but instead it's a video game. Like, I, it makes me wonder if like, you know, maybe the executives in WB were like, eh, you can't say it's a movie that's too, you know, yeah, too obvious, know. even though everything else is so obvious about it. It's like, eh, what else is hot? Video games? Yeah, sure. Make 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 them video game, uh, guys. And then I, I like how the director made the video game, you know, a board of directors or whatever, kind of like the heads of studios. I can imagine them having meetings like that or like, fans as well, well so I don't, sure also fans and and directors you know or, or people uh, they, they, they having worked in 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 certain tech spheres they had real tech energy vibes mm-hmm. or tech industry vibes sorry and they're just like god like these kinds of they, they like you know little slips of jargon in there you know talking about cultures of disruption blah 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 you're just like oh god I, I've, I i've had to have lunch with these people <laughs> yeah I've then, you start, then you start thinking like am i in the matrix oh yeah no doubt i, I think everyone uh definitely thinks that at one point uh, I, I watched um god what is it um half the bag that one of the big youtube channel uh you know movie uh, review things and and uh they just usually just trash movies and and you know uh at one point when when neo was was eating like the steak whatever he has a throwback uh they were like you know, these, these YouTuber guys were like, you know, that, that steak looked disgusting. It looked like uh, <laughs> like that show, yeah, sloppy steaks. You know, you pour some water on them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sloppy. Uh, that, the, that cracked me up. But, like, I feel like that's kind of the approach they took to, like, the fighting combat. Like, the cinematography mm-hmm. and the fighting choreography was, I mean, and I'll, it's, I mean, not it's, good, it's, yeah. it's not that good. But it's also, it's like, it's unfair to expect this woman to, like, reinvent the fucking wheel every time she makes a fucking movie. Yeah, and it makes you think, like... What Maybe else? it sucked on purpose. <laughs> I, you know, I think so because it's like, what else can you do? Because the the first one is so strong by itself, and, and it was so groundbreaking in so many different ways. And you know, how would you make a groundbreaking film nowadays? Like, you know, the the slow motion thing's been done to death. You know, uh, you know, uh, everything has to go really fast. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's like yeah, like what else would you do? I don't know, man. Uh, you know, we've seen the POV with a hardcore Henry. You know, like what else can you do? I, I'm not sure how else you can uh, emerge an audience or, or surprise an audience with you know, uh, something I, I, different. I don't know. I think I think trying to it, like if you set out with the goal of of innovating in this genre, you're going to fail. I think you yeah. just have to trust the 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 material and try to do it as well as you can regardless of what it is i remember you know when when jupiter ascending was coming out um someone asked the sisters uh about the prospect of doing another matrix movie and i think lana said honestly the idea of going back to the matrix just is such a repelling thought i kind of want to throw up (laughs) and and you know flash forward a few years it is kind of sad it's like you know these like i feel like you know it's the same thing with david chase who created the sopranos like the these artists the the only thing at this point that they can get greenlit is just a you know a reboot or a, a, a some sort of uh extension of their their existing ip yeah yeah makes you wonder what else they could do or yeah, like, yeah. 
which is why you just got to keep the bad lieutenant franchise going. Just got to keep, <laughs> keep keep pumping out those BLs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what was the, the one we talked about last time? Well, I'm trying to remember what else we talked about recently. Well, we talked about... Um, you're talking about, about uh, Black it, Christmas? It, yeah, Black Christmas and Jack Frost. That's right. Uh, you know, we, we can do a, a little combination of those franchises. You know, it'll... It is the the multiverse. Uh, I, apparently, uh, the Marvel films of uh, of, of uh, horror action <laughs> mm-hmm. or just a uh, horde reality or something. Well, I mean, we could do the 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 kind of remake, like I said, the uh, Yojimbo and Fistful of Dollars. We could do the 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 controversial take, the uh, Streets of Fire and Reservoir Dogs. Oh yes, uh, the the highly contended. Uh, uh, controversial mythos behind that those two films um i still believe that um uncut gems is kind of a remake of night in the city but perhaps the internet's not ready for that conversation yet <laughs> you know I've, I've never watched either so we will do that in the future we, we have yeah. to at this point so at this point yeah we'll make those uh one, one uh, a headliner show for sure down the road yeah, this will be what like the that? uh what was the the Simpsons gag where uh, Dredrick Tatum fights the horse <laughs> in international water, the slaughter in the water? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking of Homer fighting him. He just like just takes all his punches until. Oh yeah, because uh... he has the. I was thinking about that. He has the extra layer of fat. You know, well, it was the the, the reason why I was thinking about that. I was trying to remember the gag where uh, it starts because Homer goes to uh, Bart gets beat up by the bullies in the beginning. And then Homer goes to their dads, and the dads beat him up. <laughs> they're like, "This is for telling me how to raise my crummy kid." And they just keep smashing like pool cues over his head. But because he has this extra layer of fat in between his Doesn't skull and notice. his brain, he's fine. I love that. Yeah, God damn, that shit's so good. What, what should we uh, do uh, next week? Are you available next week? I can make next week work. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do, man? What do you want to watch? I think there's something kind of nice about doing something classical. I'd kind of like to do Yojimbo and A Fistful of Dollars. That gets if... me really excited. That's awesome. I'm very pumped. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Yes, yes, that is exciting. I'm really stoked. And I'd be really tempted to watch like both trilogies or <laughs> all, all the series of both uh, films. You know, I'd be tempted to do that as well. But we'll see how far I can get. But I'll, I will make those two a priority. That sounds good. Let's Absolutely. do that. Cool, man. Uh, Mike, don't go anywhere because I found out a way where I can just end the show, but we can stay on here together still, so you don't have to leave. Uh, So I will say thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, Whoever watched this video, thank you to our our, uh, sponsor, Famera. Please download the Famera app. It is free in the iTunes uh, app store. Download it. It is fun. Tell your friends about it and uh, watch us on there. You'll see a little banner that says featuring you know, uh, Mike and Jason and, you know, uh, talking about this movie or whatever. Uh, so, um, it's a lot of fun. What's up, Mike? What are you going to Reboot, say? reboot, remake, recycle. Reboot, it's, remake, recycle. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. TM trademarked. Yeah, there we Absolutely. go. L- locked in. Mike, where can people find you online and, and you can, uh, maybe, uh, some, some stuff to your work oh, or anything? You can, yeah, you can find me. Wait, why, why can't I get this to work? <laughs> Uh, you can find me right here at Mike Heresy on all the social media assets, uh, um, on the gram, on the Twitter. I'm, I'm, I'm there, man. Um, I am a uh, director, illustrator, uh, raconteur. Uh, I was a professional mover. Uh, <laughs> worked as a library security guard. Oh, shit. Uh, underrated local chef. Uh Jay, do you have any? Do you have any 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 fun trades you want to throw out there? Um, yeah, you know, I guess uh, I would say uh, me and my my comic book uh, uh, media type friends uh, do a show every Sunday on this channel, uh, usually around eight thirty p.m. And we'll talk about more mostly like Marvel, DC, TV shows, movies, and uh, uh, side things like that. I'm trying to get them into actual comics, so we'll see if I can get them to read some stuff uh and uh it, recently i guess i got this in the mail i do want to say i got raw magazine issue three. Oh shit very excited about this uh there's this really cool uh 
middle page uh, splash. I guess I want to do start at the beginning of the story where it's called uh, Crash. So you see the you know first page here, Crash, and you know it's a street kind of scenario, uh, cars and, and things like that and whatnot. You see these you know kind of cars about to crash, and they do, and then this, this great centerfold of uh, if I can turn the page. There we go. This, is, this big giant wow. great that's amazing it is just so much detail on there it, who's the, so who's, who's the illustrator stuff. on this ah you know i would know off the top of my head i, I uh let me see mariscal hey yep mariscal and then also uh, after the crash you have a, a little mini comic of mouse chapter two a little preview of that oh mouse was uh, great i loved mouse yeah yeah all, all done really by uh, all done by spiegelman so this is spiegelman's work uh him and his wife uh and uh it is fantastic it's really cool um i, I was really bummed that uh for, for a while i thought i was going to have to get a root canal so i was saving up money for the root canal and uh, i always check on ebay constantly for raw magazines because uh, they're pretty hard to find and i found this this one person was selling issue two which is one of the more expensive ones uh for a hundred bucks and i was like i need to be responsible and not spend money and then another person had issues one through five with all the you know inclusions of like you know cards uh a flexi disc uh the mini comics inside they had all the inserts uh pretty pristine condition like all like five or six issues for like six or seven hundred bucks and i was like so tempted i was like what if you need the reef canal? What if you, you know, uh, and so I was being responsible and uh, unfortunately, you know, all those uh, got bought up and I didn't need the root canal and I could have bought them. And so I'm very sad <laughs> about that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but if, if I ever get another uh, issue uh, one, uh, uh, an extra one, Mike, I'll send it your way. Oh my uh, God, that'd be rad. Yeah, yeah. That's it, so tight. It'd have been so cool because, like, I, I wish, really, really wish I could have had a, you know, a nicer copy of, of issue one. I, I love my issue one that I have. It has everything in it. I, I, maybe. Uh, no, actually, I think it's missing something. But uh, either way, if I do have another one, I'll send it your way. Um, but fuck yeah, yeah. So good night, everyone. Thank you, White Tiger, <laughs> for for saying Cowabunga Fam in the chat. Oh but, hell yeah! Uh, what's up, dude? Thank you so much for joining and seeing saying what's up. Uh, thank you all, and uh, we're, we are out of here. Stay bad, lieutenants.